Shalom Aleichem everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful, wonderful week. It is Erev Shabbos Parsha Shmos and we begin a new Sefer, the Sefer Hagu'ula. Sefer Shmos deals with Klai Yisrael's Shibu, their, their uh, slavery in Mitzrayim, their leaving Mitzrayim, Yitzhiyas Yamsu, uh, Kriyas Yamsu, Veser Makos, Kabbalah Satora, and the Mishkan. Um, and it all starts with the uh, birth of Moshe Rabbeinu. And we're told that Moshe is born, the, um, his home illuminates with light. When he's born, Vatera Kitov, then he's put into a Teva, and the Teva is sent al Sfas Hayor. Vatera Bas Parol Lirchotz al Hayor, Vinaro Seha Hochos al Yad Hayor. So Bas Paro is bathing. Vatera Esa Teva, and she sees the Teva Betoch Asuf. Vatishlach is Amosa Vatikacheha. She sends either two interpretations, Rashi. He either se- she either sends one of her servants or she reaches out and her hand is extended. She grabs the teva. Vatiftach, she opens it. Vatera, vatireu es hayeled, vinei naar boche. So this puzzle is a little strange. She opens the teva. Vatireu es hayeled. She sees the yeled. Now, how old is this yeled? This yeled is three months old. So usually the language of a three-month-old child would be tinok, not yelet. It's a strange word. Okay, but then it says, vihine na'ar boche. So now we're shifting from yelet to na'ar. And again, na'ar, we usually translate the word na'ar as lad. Yet we know we're talking here, the Pashab Shat is that this is Moshe Rabbeinu, an infant that is crying. Vatachamol alav, she has mercy. Vatomer, and she says, mi yaldei ha'ivrim zeh. The child must be a Jewish child. So there's an absolutely amazing Balaturim over here. And the Balaturim just makes a one-line comment, classic Balaturim, but a beautiful, beautiful idea. So the Pasuk says, Na'ar boche. It's a baby. Moshe is a few months old. That's not a lad. So first of all, the gematria of Na'ar boche is Ze Aaron HaKohen. And says the, says the Balaturim, quotes the Yalka Shimoni, what does it mean, Vahine Na'ar Boche? There was a child, a lad, crying. It wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu who was crying. Ze Aaron, Shinochto Eitzel Hateva. It was Aaron who was crying. And comes along, I heard last night that a Shev Brachos, a Rav in my neighborhood named Rav Jakubowitz, and he suggested the following idea. It wasn't, it wasn't Moshe who was crying. He heard, she heard the Na'ar, and when she heard a brother, Aaron, crying over his brother, that told her clearly, Bas Paro, Batomer Miyalde Ha'ivrimze. When a, she saw the cry of a brother for a brother, the unique heartfelt cry of Aaron for Moshe, right away she knew that this was something special, something profound, something deep, and it must be a Jew. Because that is the essence of a Jew. A Jew is someone who has brothers in pain, his brothers struggling, his brothers having a tough time. So we cry for our brothers. That's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that way, and uh, sometimes, unfortunately, not. But that's how it's supposed to be. And if you look at perhaps the key to Moshe Rabbeinu's early years, as we go a little further, is Moshe grows up in the house of Paro, and then he goes out. Moshe by El Echav. He then goes out to his brothers. The Jewish slaves, by Yar Tam, he sees their suffering. And just like his brother did for him, Vineha Na'ar Boche, Aaron cried for his brother, so Moshe follows suit and cries and looks out for his own brethren, by Yar Ishmitsu Maki Echav. And Moshe says, I will not have it that a fellow Jew is being beaten by a Mitzri, and he takes action on the Mitzri. And the very next day, by Yetzei Bayom Hasheni, and he sees Shnei Anashim Ivrim. Now he sees two Jews that are fighting with each other. Vayomer la Rasha. And he says to the aggressor Jew, Lama Takere Echa. How can you possibly be hitting your brother? Impossible. That's not how Jews act. And then he runs away because he's found out. He runs away, goes to Midian, and once again he sees the daughters of Yisro. 
they're trying to get water from the well, and there are aggressive rowing, persecuting them. By Evoha rowing v'yegarshim, they chase them away. By Yaka Moshe, v'yoshian. Once again, Moshe steps up to the plate to defend those in need. So if you want to understand who Moshe was, who the Bnei Amram were, I think this is the core idea. And this is ultimately how we're introduced to Klal Yisrael in Mitzrayim, is the notion of a brother caring for his brother, crying for his brother, that signaled Basparo, that yeah, it must be that this Yelet is Meha Ivriim, because that's how the Jews act. And Moshe grows up and he sees Mitzri persecuting Jew, and he defends his brother by Yar B'Sivol Sam. He sees two Jews fi fighting, that's not Rasha Lama Take Re'echa. This is not the way of the Jewish people. And then when it's two Gentiles, it's the Rowim and the Benos Yisra once again stepping up to care for those that are in need. We always speak a lot about the emphasis on Torah learning and on tefillah, but ultimately the third pillar that the world stands on is Milos Hasadim, is that sense of reus, that sense of friendship, that sense of caring for our brethren. At the end of the day, that's what's ultimately going to bring the Gula is that sense of, of being there for our brethren, being there for each other, having that sense of love, the Ahavta Reicha Kamocha, that's what Aaron teaches us, the Oev Shalom, Rodev Shalom, that's what Moshe teaches us, and that's ultimately the legacy they have for Klal Yisrael to be those Rachmanim, Baishanim, and certainly Gomli Chasadim.